Hello friends, today I want to talk about a situation that may be incredibly painful and challenging for some of our viewers and that is discovering that your spouse has cheated on you. Oh no, oh no. You either went on to that cell phone and saw that text message or you saw something on their social media that raised some red flags or maybe some of the emails were questionable or that trip that they said they were taking out of town for work you looked at the bank statements and there was some stuff on there that just didn't add up well if you find yourself in this very difficult situation and are now considering getting a divorce this video is going to offer you some strategies to help you navigate this very difficult and challenging process welcome back to the divorce broadcast my name is manny cigara coming to you from miami florida All right, so you've recently learned that your spouse has cheated on you. I'm sorry to hear that you're probably going through a whirlwind of emotions. How do you react? Who do you tell? What should I do? Should I file for divorce? Should we go to therapy? What about the kids? What about the fur babies? All of this is probably going through your mind. So let's try to take it step by step and offer you some insight and strategies on what we should be thinking next. The first thing I will say though is is definitely don't go all games of throne on anybody especially your soon-to-be ex-spouse remember it is not worth getting arrested or getting an injunction issued against you so let's take a deep breath and kind of walk through the process Speaking of processing, it is important to process your emotions. That's right. Acknowledge your feelings. It is perfectly okay to feel the hurt, the pain, the anger, the betrayal. So allow yourself to experience these emotions without any type of self-judgment or criticism. All of these feelings are normal and part of the healing process. And don't rush. Healing takes more than a day. It's perfectly okay to take it day by day. You do not have to have everything figured out immediately. Next, you should consider seeking support. Reach out to a trusted friend or a family member and let them know what's going on with you. They will provide you with emotional support. Sometimes just having someone there to listen to you can provide a world of difference when you hear or find out about this awful jarring news. Consider seeking professional support. A therapist or a counselor, they can provide you with a safe space where you can explore your emotions and they can help you navigate the emotional turmoil that you're going through. They can also provide you with the tools to cope with the stress and anxiety that is related to marital infidelity. Prioritizing your emotional well-being is also important. Engaging in activities that bring you comfort and peace is what's really important at this point. Whether it's meditating, exercising, or just relaxing, this is what's important for your mental health and your physical health at this moment. Setting boundaries on your soon-to-be ex-spouse is also important. It's okay to take that space and that time in order for you to try to heal. Remember also we've created videos previously that discuss how to deal with divorces and some of the activities that you can get engaged in. So take a peek at our previous videos because there may be some insightful information on that as well. Next, while we are processing our emotions and getting the emotional support Support that we need and then concentrating on making sure that we're right in our minds and our spirits and our emotions. Now is the time to start doing some research to find out what the legal implications of infidelity are. Start with the computer. Start looking how infidelity or cheating spouse affects time sharing. If your particular jurisdiction has some factors that take into account cheating or infidelity or the person that your spouse is cheating on you with. Let's say they have issues either drug issues or substance abuse issues or other issues, how is that going to be affected according to your particular jurisdiction? Also, how does alimony in your particular jurisdiction address a spouse who's unfaithful? And finally, property division. Now is the time to start thinking about, well, if my spouse is having an affair, are they wasting marital funds on that affair? Is there a dissipation of asset claim? That may be good information to have in your pocket when you get to the next step which is consulting with a divorce attorney. 
Now that you have finished your initial research online, maybe you even checked a certain YouTube channel that has a lot of this information already on there for you, it may be the time to consult with a divorce attorney because you want to make sure that you are acting above board and within the law. This is especially true if you are considering accessing your spouse's private either bank accounts or investment accounts, their cell phone or their car. Consult with an attorney to see if if you are acting in the right way and see what insight and advice they may give you on the road forward, especially with the next step of the process, which we're about to discuss now. Now that you've processed your emotions and you've gotten your squad, your family, your friends to support you, maybe you're in therapy, you did the initial research on the infidelity issue online and you spoke to a divorce attorney, it's time to dust yourself off and get to work. It's time to gather evidence. That's the next step in the process. But before we get into it, I need to say that you should avoid illegal surveillance. That means that be very cautious of installing either hidden cameras or recording conversations, especially in the two-party consent states, because a lot of times if you engage in this illegal conduct, it could be a crime and it could backfire on your divorce case. So let's talk about gathering evidence the right way. All right, so let's start off with saving digital communication. That's right. If you have legal access, and I said legal access, to either text messages messages, emails, or social media communications, make sure to save them. Either download them or take a screenshot and save them. Save them electronically and in a physical file. If you have the ability to do so legally, photograph and video evidence is crucial. If you have evidence that proves the infidelity, save that video because it could be used in court and make sure that it is time stamped and properly stored so that it doesn't get corrupted or lost. If you have financial records because remember the discovery the what is inside the financial records always betrays people if you find unusual spending patterns or unusual gifts let's say there were Victoria's Secret purchases or there are purchases at a nightclub or a restaurant or a vacation that are either unexplained or expensive these could be strong indicators of infidelity and you need to save that information in a safe place also keep it confidential don't broadcast to the world, especially to the other side, that you have this information that shows them in a very unfavorable light. This is information that's going to be crucial to your case. If you have an attorney, obviously share it with he or she, but don't broadcast it to people because what's the point? Then they'll be on notice beforehand and you may want to hold on to that information for future use. The next step is one of the most crucial steps that you can take, and that is that you need to protect your own finances during a divorce. Take an inventory of your current financial situation. Gather all relevant documents, including bank statements, investment statements, savings accounts, retirement accounts. All of that information is crucial for you to have a picture of your current financial status. It's important to save it in a safe spot and make copies of it. This will be important for future use when the other side may be claiming that there isn't money or that the finances aren't what you believe them to be. The next step for the spouse that got cheated on to consider is to perhaps open up their own bank account. That way they have their own financial independence from their soon-to-be former spouse. And when the divorce is over, they will have their own account that they can securely put their money. They may want to consider looking into their own separate credit card, especially if their credit is entirely intertwined with their former spouse and they need to build their own credit. Also, it is imperative for the monitoring of the joint accounts. This is a big step. It's important for that spouse to keep a close eye on the expenditures to make sure that the funny business doesn't continue. If there's excessive payments that are being made either at restaurants or on vacations and depending upon the situation when that spouse files for divorce, they may have to file an emergency motion to freeze this account or prohibit any money from leaving that account if the cheating spouse is making these unreasonable or unusual expenditures. The next step to consider 
is possibly creating a budget and a financial plan, and this should be a two-step analysis. The first step is to consider the current budget in terms of housing and groceries and expenses for the kids. Remember that this is during the divorce, and this will help that particular spouse understand what the current expenses and what the current income is. The second part of the analysis is planning for the future, anticipating what the future expenses will be in terms of housing and groceries and children's expenses. Remember, it is important to know what the future may hold so that when a settlement is negotiated, it contemplates these future budgetary concerns. It is so important to prioritize the emotional stability of children during this difficult process. How can we do that? Well, maintaining open lines of communications is important. Encouraging the children to express their feelings and reassure them that both parents love them. Making sure to have age-appropriate and honest conversations with them, but at the same time, not engaging in the blame game and trying to blame the other parent. Shielding them from the Conflicts, making sure that any difficult conversations or conflicts do not occur in front of the children. Seeking professional support for children should also be a consideration. A therapeutic intervention with either a child psychologist or a therapist, especially if the children are struggling with the emotional impact of the situation, may be a great idea. Professional support can help children to process their feelings in a healthy way and thrive despite the acrimony or the emotional turmoil of a divorce involving infidelity. It is so extremely important for these spouses who were cheated on as they go through the process to start developing a plan for the future. Set new personal goals. Start thinking about what they want in their future life post-divorce. Whether it's pursuing a new career, traveling, picking up a new hobby, or setting some goals that will help them shift their focus, this is a very important step. It is also equally important to surround yourself with positive positive people with positive energy. Create a positive space in your home, at work with the people that you hang out with because this positivity is what is going to guide them through the next chapter of their life. As we come to a conclusion of our video on what to do if a spouse cheats, for those spouses that got cheated on, assuming you considered some of our suggestions or are thinking about following them or maybe even follow them, it is time for them to put on their armor and and embrace the legal process with confidence. Once they start the legal process, they have to trust in the system. Is the system perfect? I can tell you that the system is not perfect. Will the divorce go by quickly? I can't promise you that either because each case is different. However, that person that got cheated on and is now filing for divorce, they should keep their gaze fixated on the end of the case, the final result, because every step of the way, they will get closer and closer closer to getting to the point where the case will be over and it'll be a new chapter in their life that will be written by them exclusively and how they want to live their life. All right, so that is a wrap on our video on what to do with that cheating spouse. If you know anyone that may find this information useful, please have them look us up at www.sagaralawfirm.com. We have offices in Miami and Orlando, Florida. Se habla español. Please do us a favor and like this video, subscribe to the Divorce Broadcast, and we will speak to you again soon. Thank you.